In the United States, people in poverty have very few ways to engage in the market or support their community. They're perceived as takers. The community closet created a new local economy based on people with limited means. Their actions help fund the solutions. Everyone's familiar with the old-fashioned thrift store model. We wanted to do it better, treat everyone with respect and create a place where folks felt welcome. With the motto, reuse, recycle, reinvest, we sell low-cost goods and use the proceeds to fund community projects. We opened in 2005 with just $12,000 and our immediate successes stunned us. In 10 years, we've reinvested $400,000 in cash grants to area nonprofits, had a local economic impact of over $3 million, and we give thanks daily that we can provide support to our neighbors. In Park County, if you're a single mom with kids under five, there's a 50% chance that you're living in poverty. For a while, that was me, and the dingy, cheerless thrift stores I shopped at made me feel worthless. I wanted a welcoming store where customers were appreciated and everyone involved is part of the team moving us forward. Although we're based in Livingston, a city of 7,000 on the banks of the Yellowstone, we serve all of Park County from Wilsall south to Gardner, the north entrance to the park. But our donors and shoppers come from all over Montana and we've even won local awards as the best place to take tourists. From the get-go, we set prices according to our values. For example, we think literacy is paramount, so the kids' books are all free, and we always have a wide selection of reading material in our free bins out front, so there's no judgment about reading levels. Our public bathroom also exemplifies respect for shoppers and our sense of humor. Many thrift stores don't let customers use their bathrooms. Can you imagine if you're potty training your child, he tells you he has to go, and there's no bathroom? We decorate ours with donated materials and change the theme annually. Philanth philanthropy at the community closet comes in many shapes and sizes, but donors are the key to our success. It just wouldn't be possible without them. So we go out of our way to build personal relationships with all of them, treating them like the VIPs that they are. To keep merchandise moving and ensure that people can afford it, we keep prices low and standardized. Adult clothing ranges from $2 to $5. Kids clothes, 25 cents to a dollar. And every week for two hours on Saturday morning, everything is half off. Yet despite low prices and rapid turnover, we soon found ourselves drowning in a sea of donations. We get an amazing array of stuff through our doors, some of it usable, some of it not. And in Livingston, we pay commercial disposal rates. And as our success grew, so did our garbage bill. When a little alley house next door became available, I had an idea. What if we shuttled our overflow there and opened it as a discount store? I knew most people living in poverty would rather pay than receive outright charity. So we created the Alley Annex, our weekend quarter store. It's the central piece of our waste reduction strategy. Because after the Alley Annex closes on Sunday, we put everything left over in our free bins and roll them out front. There's always someone out there perusing the merchandise. And by the end of the week, 90% of it's gone. 10% remains to be thrown away or recycled and the cycle starts anew. Then I focused on maximizing the value of our high-end donations and build our market to folks who might not be comfortable in a thrift setting. Inspired by shops I'd seen in New York City, we created the Curated Closet, a downtown boutique version of thrift. This provided more money to give away and stabilized our cash flow. I also noticed we had a growing surplus of items coveted elsewhere like vintage workwear and fashion from the 60s and 70s. Inspired by my teenage son, Bill, we created a vintage clothing line called Deluxe Rural Wear and took it on the road to indie rock concerts. <laughs> Every day at the closet, you'll find people living on the margins, shopping side by side with frugal folks of all income levels. Because the truth is, the disenfranchised among us come in all shapes and sizes. 
And in Montana, we all know that it's possible to be highly educated, well-traveled, well-read, but live a precarious financial existence. The community closet facilitates philanthropy. Four times a year, our board reviews requests and allocates grants to area nonprofits. We also have a donation jar uh, for area causes right by the register, and I've been privileged to hear customers say, you know what, they helped me, now I can help someone else. We give merchandise grants to other nonprofits, teachers, and community events. For example, we donate cookbooks to the food pantry, allowing shoppers there to see in words and pictures how they can use available ingredients to cook healthy food. We have created a new community where everyone is welcomed and valued. Customers become volunteers because they see how much fun we have. Our grant recipients feed hungry people, help domestic violence victims, address medical and mental health issues, and much, much more. We've spent more than 10 years refining our business plan, testing theories, measuring, and monitoring. We did one thing and then another, and it worked because of the people involved. So thank you to our donors and shoppers, to our board members, to our very dedicated staff and volunteers, and to all of you here tonight.